It's a good movie, you should check it out. So hey everyone, welcome back to the channel, Twin Stick Garage, where I, uh, I build old semi-trucks single-handedly. And uh, coincidentally, this is uh, this truck here, I'm trying to build up exactly like the one used in the movie. And I've been working on it for, oh, probably a little over a year now, about halfway there. And I really want to start putting some energy into this truck, and I want to get it finished, painted, and on the road by the end of summer. So, uh, so let's dive in. Okay, so first up, if you've been following the build for a while, you'll know that I was trying to replicate the lights that were used, uh, uh, the marker lights in the side of the hood. Now this isn't a very common spot for a clearance light, but they, they were on some of the Kenworths in the late 60s, early 70s, and uh, both of the movie trucks uh, used in filming, and then the third one that was used to film the intro after filming Wrapped, uh, all had those lights there. So I, at first I couldn't find at my local dealers, uh, any of the lights that uh, match the movie truck. So what I elected to do was I went to Lesco and I got these uh, chrome rings that I actually powder coated black in a, in a previous episode and then uh, got these snap in lights and I cut these holes out of here. And it, and it wasn't going to look too, too bad, especially with the, uh, the dark coffee uh, midnight brown. It's almost like a black paint that I'm going to paint it. I thought that would look half decent. But then one of, the, uh, one of the viewers out there, uh, a fellow that's actually been helping me out with some of the stuff for this truck in the past, his, he goes by the handle of uh, the Reverend on Instagram. He actually sent me a surprise in the mail and he sent me uh, two of these marker lights where they just actually, the way it mounts is it just screws on right to the fiberglass and then the wire goes through and then you need another wire for the ground. But he actually sent me these, so thank you so much for that. I really appreciate it. Um, now, he sent me two of the white ones. That was uh, the white ones, with, or the ones with the white backing here, were used on the 73. And then the ones with the, the black backing were used on the 74. And so, since I'm doing this truck up like the, the 74, I'm probably going to go with these black ones. But now I need to unring this bell and these holes that I cut in a previous episode. And I'm going to have to have to repair that. So what I'm planning on doing is I found an old uh, piece of a fender, a 900A fender, just sitting in the ditch just down the road from my place. So what I'm going to do is get the same hole saw and cut out some circle coupons that would match that same size. Then I'll support it in from behind and then I'll do some fiberglass repair on both the outside and the inside and then we'll sand it all smooth and then we should be able to just drill two holes and mount the proper lights on there. Okay, so before I get going on the bodywork, I picked up a, a new toy when I was walking around Princess Auto, which is kind of like the uh, Canadian Harbor Freight. And uh, it, it, Princess Auto is kind of like Costco. You go in there to get one thing. I went to get some, some fiberglass uh, material to repair those holes up. And I saw that these scaffolds were on sale, so I just couldn't resist. Throw in the back of the truck. So what I'm thinking though, is this gonna be pretty practical when it comes to not only doing the body work, but then also when I go to paint the truck. Uh, it's got a max height of about six feet. So when I'm standing on that top platform, I should be able to reach the, uh, the roof and the top edges there. And I just thought it's gonna be quite convenient when I go to paint, because I'll be able, be able to walk back and forth on the platform as opposed to uh, hanging off a ladder, which is kind of how I did this. So we'll go ahead and put that together and uh, I think that'll, uh, that'll work out quite nice. When I drink brown liquor, I get crazy quicker than an old red fox on the run. I get tongue tied and I lose my mind and everything comes undone. It's hard to explain how it bends my... So that shaking lets you know it's safe. Okay. Let's see what kind of damage we can do. When it's a swimming in my blood, when I drink 
brown liquor I go crazy quicker than an old red fox on the run Run, run, I can chug a lot So I'd like to think I get smarter as I go And in previous episodes I just get the air gun and blow all this off of here But it went everywhere in the shop So I'm going to try and keep the dust down And as I go vacuum it up Beer mug, I can win the blue ribbon every time. On rum and coke, I tell real good jokes, and I hardly ever cross that line. I can shoot tequila till all I feel is one big happy buzz. But if you see me starting on the gym, or the okay, so when you think it's looking really nice, the uh, and you're almost done, throw down a different color of uh, primer as a guide coat. And it'll tell you all the spots that you haven't hit yet and all your highs and lows. So I'll keep working on this, keep trying to knock it down. But at least I can see where I still have a, I have to get it, get the height down and smooth that out. I'll probably get it as close as I can and then I'll put a thin coat of filler in there and then sand that down again, rinse, repeat. And then uh, this roof cap should almost be ready for some primer. And then onto the... Uh, the cab roof cap. <laughs> Fun. Yeah, snow's melting though. That's something at least. <laughs> Hashtag Bondo Bucket. So we're going to do a head to head comparison here. So that's all I had left of the Canadian tire body filler. And then this is a, a new jar of stuff from uh, Princess Auto. So we'll let that harden up. And while that was going on, I was going to move over to, uh, to another task. So if you recall in a previous episode, I was doing what I could to try and polish out all these huck bolt heads and I was I tried steel wool or it wasn't even really steel wool it was like stainless steel pot scrubber which was way too abrasive so then I tried some scotch brite pads and I tried a bunch of other multiple other things but as you can see even that I was trying to be gentle I still ended up flattening out some of the heads so it doesn't have that nice round profile and that one it wasn't too bad but anyway as always the the viewers had some great suggestions and one of the suggestions was these, uh, what do they call them? So scotch bright roll lock bristle disc. And they come in different uh, equivalent, I guess, stiffness to kind of make it equivalent to the grit of sandpaper. And I think I went, I think this is about 100, equivalent to 100. So we'll throw this on the die grinder here and we'll see how this works. But I'm thinking this is going to be a lot more gentle, but we'll still kind of take the, the paint off because there's a lot more hucks that that I couldn't really get in here, like in behind the door sill. So we'll throw us on the die grinder and see how it works. Mm, that's good lead paint. I probably should have a mask on. Yeah, that, uh, that's quite a little tool. So as you can see on the aluminum panels, it just cleans the head up beautifully and you don't lose any of the profile. But the, I noticed that over here, it was a little abrasive and a guy's got, focus. A guy's got to be careful because it'll cut in. It's, it's actually aluminum. abrasive enough to chew into that. But yeah, that's a, that's a decent little system. That's better than what I was using. And it, like I say, it keeps the profile. So then another suggestion by one of the viewers is uh, brass uh, brushes. So we'll maybe give this a go too and see how that works out. Now this will obviously turn a lot slower, but uh, we'll see what that does. So the, uh, the brass wire there, it, uh, it cleaned it up quite nice, took all the paint off. But as you can see, it was still abrasive enough to score the aluminum. So that'll still require some sanding, but definitely cleaned it up nicer than the Scotch-Brite pad. But of course the Scotch-Brite pad doesn't scratch it all to hell. And then I tried it up here and it was just way too abrasive. Cleaned the huck head up nicely, but now I got to put filler in there and repair that. So it's definitely not a winner for the fiberglass. So maybe I'll, I'll stick with this guy for now. 
Unless someone else has a, has a better way to polish these huck bolts. Well, that, uh, that took some time to knock all that down, but it's sure looking smooth now. You can even feel it. There's not much. A couple little spots still need to be hit. I'll probably spray some, again, some, some darker primer there. And that is why it costs so darn much to pay somebody to paint your truck, because it takes hours and hours. That's not bad at all. That's looking pretty darn good. So one spot that's a little low there. And around here as well. So maybe a thin layer in those two spots. But like I mentioned in an earlier video, this thing was just dished right down, probably about half inch. So yeah, looking good. So I'm just out here in the in the back dump where uh, I got a lot of old truck parts and stuff so I thought I'd come out here. Unfortunately I can't get this thing out of here because we've had a kind of a weird winter where there's been a lot of freeze thaw going on and it just melted and then refroze right into the ground. So I figured I'd just uh, come out here and, and steal a couple circles of fiberglass off it. But I still can't believe I found this just uh, sitting in the ditch. Why would someone throw away a perfectly good 900A fender. One man's garbage, another man person's good on garbage. And I'm gonna roll with that. There's one. Okay. There we go. Okay, let's see if we can unring this bell. So first up, I just wanna try and cover up my, my nice stainless here. So we don't spill resin on it. Okay, next up we got our little circle. So what I was thinking of doing was taping it from in behind. And that'll support it while we put a layer of fiberglass mat on the front, let that harden, and then I can take the tape away and do the same on the other side. And I guess I gotta Tape this guy in here like that first. Oh man, I can barely get in there. <laughs> oh man, this would have been nicer to do when the hood was off. Okay. Now we'll cut a we'll cut up a square of the mat. Yeah. You don't need to measure using the last little bit here. Something like that should work. <laughs> Smells lovely. Okay. think I knew what I was doing. It's a good thing I had all that practice on the fixing that broken fender. Oops. If 
professional body folks out there are probably just yelling at the screen. That's not the way to do that. You're doing it wrong. <laughs> probably. But that's okay. It's still going to work. When this mess hardens up and we sand it all down, it should be fine. There. All right, we'll let that mess harden up and then I can do the same thing on the inside. I was actually thinking, why not build it up a little more in the center? Yeah, I like that. Yeah, so that actually turned out quite nice. I think that'll uh, that'll hold well. So I just need to sand that all down, sand it smooth. And then I also filled in the holes and I did a fiberglass, a little fiberglass mat on the outside and then on the inside as well with lots of epoxy because I really wanted to fill those holes in. And I thought if I just used Bondo or some type of fiberglass mud that it could potentially pop out. So can you imagine if this was all painted and all of a sudden you went over a bump and the little cylinder popped out there and you'd have a hole in your hood. So. It's going to require a little bit of sanding now because of course it's built up and then I'm going to have to feather it out with a thin layer of Bondo, but I think it'll turn out quite nice. So we'll sand this all down and we'll sand this as well and then we'll drill those holes and put those proper lights on there and see how that looks. Tied and I lose my mind And everything comes undone <laughs> Dusty Okay, so I noticed I don't know if you can see it in there I wonder if I should zoom in So I noticed I didn't do a very good job Getting rid of all the air bubbles So there was a couple little air bubbles Well, you can't see that Hang on There was a couple little air bubbles in there so i actually sanded it right down smooth this one actually turned out quite nice but then there's a little air bubble in there you can see so i'm going to mix up a quick batch of resin and i'm just going to put a thin film everywhere just to try and get that all filled in and then i'll sand it smooth but it's actually turning out quite nice like this one you can't even tell there was a hole there beauty a little dab will do you Something like that. Get in there. All right. So while that, uh, that dries up and hardens, like I always say, I'm going to make use of the minutes inside the minutes. So I figure I'll get the air sander out and start tackling this fender. Oh, coming along. Oh, slowly but surely. Oh. Yeah, thank goodness for that air sander. It still takes a long time to, to knock it all down, but it, uh, yeah, it's very helpful as opposed to block sanding my hand. Yeah, so making progress there. And this scaffold is worth 
every penny. So originally I had the hood down and I was, uh, you know, down on the ground there trying to sand this and I thought, why don't I just flip the hood up? And then of course, the way I had the, the scaffold all the way at the top, it was too tall. So I just lowered it down and that works absolutely perfect. So very happy with this purchase. It's awesome. So hopefully that epoxy's uh, hardening up and we'll hit that with the sander next. And then we'll, we'll put those lights on there and see if they look like they did in the movie. Uh, I couldn't believe it. I was actually out of Bondo. So I had to go to Canadian Tire and I figured instead of getting the little one quart ones, I'd get a whole gallon of it. Because we're probably going to need it. Canadian Tire sells the, the best auto body filler. <clears throat> I don't know if it's any different from the rest of the stuff. But it's cheaper. And a gallon pail is nice because it's a little easier to get the the mud out of there. Okay, something like that. And just so I don't get it all over my hands. There, something like that should do. That's not going to work, Mark. Let's try this again. That's better. There, something like that. Okay, so I'll do the other side. And we'll let it harden and sand her down. Saturday night, a sitting back and sipping on such. And I do just fine on homemade wine. And I never think of shooting my gun. Yeah, I'm okay when the band is playing. Pop a top again. But when I start to slug that devil in it. So that's the hole for the power wire, something like that. Now I can just see the outline of the old, the old cutout. So that's what I'm aiming for here. That looks right. Okay. Okay. Uh. Uh. That should hold that light on her. Nice. Okay, so I'm running a little short of materials, I guess. So I didn't have any quarter 20 screws. So I just took a, a bolt, little bolts, but little bolts wouldn't fit in there. So I just cut the heads off and put a slot in there for a, for a flat screw. So it'll work for now. Not ideal, but like I always say, do the best you can with what you got. Okay, something like that. Okay. 
There. Finally, we've got the right lights on the truck. Oh, that looks sharp. I like that a lot. Okay, let's see if it lights up. Okay. <laughs> nice. All right. Success. Well, that's how to unring a bell and, uh, and do it right. So thanks again, Daniel. Really appreciate you donating those movie correct lights to the project can't thank you enough and thanks to all the uh, the viewers out there appreciate you watching this video to the end i uh, hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something had a few laughs along the way and uh yeah we'll just keep working away on this truck and one of these days we'll uh, we'll get it finished and it'll be just like the movie truck so until that time don't ever forget if you got it a trucker brought it Nerves like steel, he's going up to glory riding 18 wheels. Click the Twin Stick Garage logo to subscribe and be sure to comment down below. I encourage you to share any thoughts, feedback, suggestions, stories, or even just a simple hello. I read and appreciate every one. And if you really want to help out the channel, head over to my Patreon, a subscription based service that you can sign up and see videos before they're released on YouTube. I'm also going to be posting some content that you can't see anywhere else, so go check it out.